Okay. My name is Kyle Welcher. Thank you for watching this video. I really do appreciate you clicking on it. I've been lacking in the past week or so, but we're getting it rolling back up, getting everything ready and prepared for Lake Eufaula. Hit that subscribe button. You don't want to miss anything. So anyways, today we're making another addition to the True Series of the videos series I've been doing recently. So if you're new to the True Series, basically what it is is I go through what I keep in my boat or my truck and I take all over the country and I show you all the truth about exactly what you need and what you need to use if you want to fish similar to me because all this stuff is is my personal history dictating what I'm going to do in the future. So I like to keep it pretty simple and just you know keep as little amount of stuff as possible as I can and this is what I keep as far as line goes. So basically obviously I have way more quantity than this but these are all the kinds that I keep. So let's get started on fishing line. Basically, I use two types of fishing line almost exclusively, and that is braided line and fluorocarbon line. And I'll tell you the differences in whenever I use them. So I use fluorocarbon line the absolute most. I use those for everything from crankbaits, chatterbaits, jigs, big jigs, flipping in wood, flipping in, you know, lighter wood, not super heavy wood. I use it for, you know, I don't use it for top water, but I use it for any kind of a Carolina rig, big shaky head leaders for my drop shot, leaders for anything I throw on a spinning rod. Everything that I can think of that I'm throwing out dragging or throwing out and reeling that's not floating, I throw it on fluorocarbon. So basically, I'll tell you the one thing that I think is a very valuable tip for people that are looking to buy line. And what you need to look for whenever you buy line is this little number right here. So you can see, now this is an old pack of line. I've had it forever. I, I don't you know, use this type too much, but basically that is the diameter of the line. So where it says 12 pound test right there, forget about that. That is irrelevant to you. So basically companies have some kind of a way that they, that they, you know, figure out how strong this line is. And that 12 pound test right there tells you where this line usually breaks. It doesn't tell you anything about this spool at all right here, except for where some other line like it has broke. But this diameter tells you exactly how thick this line is inside this spool. So I go by the diameter all the time. And if I'm throwing something like a jig, a shaky head, not a, not a light shaky head, a big shaky head or a big worm or anything I'm skipping and, or, or flipping, you know, to sparse cover, I want to use something with like a .37 or .38 diameter. And the reason for that is that's going to give me the best fall rate and strength. I don't want to go up to a .4 or a .41, which is your normal 20 to 25 pound line. I, I want to keep it a little bit lighter than that, give me a little bit more natural of a fall, and still retain a little bit of strength with that 0.37 or 0.38 diameter. So, for certain brands like Gamma, that might be like 15 pound test because their line is very, very thick. For late brands like Sunline, that might be 20 pound test because their line is very, very thin as far as their rating. So, I, you know, don't pay attention to the rating at all. And then for the brand like K9, which I use a lot, that's going to fall right in the middle at their 18 pound line. So that's what I do a lot for, you know, skipping my chatterbaits, flipping jigs, stuff like that. And I always use 100% fluorocarbon. So this K9 Pro 100 is 100%. This Invisex is 100%. It even says the red label is 100%, but I don't believe that. I ain't buying that crap. It has so much stretch to it. I just don't think it could be 100% fluorocarbon. I think it obviously has to have some small amount of you know, copolymer mix or something like that because it does not feel like 100% fluorocarbon when I use it. If it is, it's just a really low quality resin. Now that being said, this line is super strong and if you're a beginner getting into fishing, this is the only line you should probably buy right now because it's gonna keep a little bit of the, uh, it's gonna keep a lot of the strength, it's gonna keep a little bit of the sensitivity, but it's still gonna be, you know, affordable and cheap and last you a long time. So whenever you get to a higher quality line, like this K9 Pro 100 or this Invisex 100, you know, the Invisex, the line is very, very dense. The line is very, very, uh, you know, strong, but it's very apt to burning, which that means is if you get a bird nest or something, the line is so dense when it when it uh, rubs on each other, it's going to be more likely to burn. So this line right here is not for beginners. It's not for somebody that's going to get a lot of bird nests. It's not for somebody that's going to, you know, use a line for a long, long time. It's not that type of line. It's not long-term line. It's very high quality. You're going to get more sensitivity. You're going to have, it's going to be a little bit clearer in the water. And it's going to be super strong at first, but it's, you know, more likely to burn and stuff like that. So if you're just trying to spool up a reel for months at a time, I would go with something a little bit less quality because that stretch is going to help you out over the course of months. Now, I went over the fluorocarbon. Done with that. That's where all most of my money goes anyways is into the fluorocarbon. Number two is braided line. Now, 
there's two different main types of braided line. Number one, there's a four strand braid. That's kind of what came out first. That's like what original Power Pro was. If you can think about original Power Pro, it's very rough and rigid. You know, it's only got four strands woven together. So it, you know, it's not a perfectly smooth, you know, piece of line. And what that does is, to, in my opinion, I've had more problems with breakage when I'm using a four strand braid. But what it will do is if you're flipping in grass, it helps saw the braid. It cuts the grass a little bit better. And, you know, but it's really noisy coming in and out of your rod and your guides and your reel and going in and out of the grass or the wood. So for that reason, I'm out. And I go with the eight or nine strand braid. Now it's more typical to find an eight strand braid. There's only a couple companies that I know of anyways. There could be more doing a nine strand braid. That is K9 and then uh, Jordan Lee has a signature series nine strand braid as well. But anyways, the nine strand braids are extremely, extremely smooth. They're very, very soft and I'm starting to fall in love with them. The thing that trips me out a little bit is nine strand braids seem to be a little bit thinner than eight strand braids. So these two right here are both 60 pound test braids and the nine strand is noticeably thinner than the eight strand. Now, have I had problems with this breaking? I have not, but at the same time, in the back of my mind, I know that if something's thinner, it just has to be a little bit weaker. So I still go with the eight strand, 60 pound, braid whenever I'm throwing something like frogs or punching in grass and I go with the nine strand when I want something that'll cast a little bit further like buzz baits or swim jigs or smaller frog or stuff like that so basically that's the two braids that I throw all the time is these two and then spinning rods obviously I put all my backing as braided line so on spin rods I always you know put tons of braided line backing and then tie it to a fluorocarbon leader and this is the braid that I use for that this is 20 pound eight strand has tons of strength and then another thing it has is a fluorescent color. And this has helped me out numerous times over the past year or so. And I mean, only like 10 times I can, you know, just think of where the fluorescent line actually helped me notice when I got a bite. But I mean, one time is enough for me to keep using it. So basically, I've had a couple times where I throw a wacky rig out and it'll start falling. And then my line will just start going a little bit faster than it should have been going because I know the rate of fall the Wacky Rig has. And I'll just see my line take off or see my line move to the left or the right a little bit. That fluorescent line just really helps me pick up on that bite faster. And whenever I'm throwing a Wacky Rig up beside some heavy cover and it's just floating down, the faster I realize I got a bite, the faster I can get him away from the cover because I'm usually throwing like 10 pound lines. So this fluorescent line is a must in my opinion as far as you're going to throw on a spin rod or something like that. Now. The only other line that I throw is monofilament, and this is some old, I guess this is like the Strin Low Viz Green, only monofilament I had. I actually got some of this on a reel right now, and I only throw this one time and one time only. Small top waters, prop baits, and pop bars. Stuff like that when I'm rolling it around real heavy, real, you know, tight cover, brim beds, dock posts, stuff like that. I'm just rolling that little bait around. I'm going to go to a monofilament line, almost always going to use a 14 pound. Thinking about going down and buying some 12 right now because I feel like the 12 might get me a little bit more bites and a little bit more castability, but for right now I've been using 14 for years and that's the only, only time I use monofilament and that's not even a yearly deal. Every other year or so I'll get an application where I feel like I need mono and I'll pull out some mono. All my other top orders, my big walking bait, stuff like that, I put those on 40 to 50 pound braid so I can absolutely sling them suckers and get it out there. So, one more type of line, and it's a type of line that I've only put on a reel one time in my entire life, and it's more of a copolymer type. Now this right here is the actual K9 Fluoro. This is the original Fluoro. This stuff is cheap uh, as far as affordability. I'm not saying cheap as far as quality, but as far as affordability, it's very, very economical. You can get a big spool like this for I can't even remember how much it is, but I know it's like a fraction of the price of 100% fluorocarbon. But the problem with this kind of line is it's got a little bit more stretch to it. It's got a little bit less sensitivity, and it's not quite as dense, so it doesn't sink just like fluorocarbon. So a lot of people like to use this type of line for cranking. And what that's going to do is you're going to be able to cast your baits even further with this kind of line because this line casts so well. You can absolutely sling it. The problem is you're not going to have the sensitivity. You can't tell what kind of bottom you're hitting. And that you know 100% fluorocarbon is going to help your bait get down a little bit deeper so the the fluoro is a great you know line to throw for some people but me personally i don't have any applications for it so i don't really use it you know almost at all i like to have the 100% fluorocarbon when i'm cranking and that's what most people use this line right here for so basically that's all that i know about lines pretty much that's what i do that's what i use that's what i use all the time and if you want to buy some of this awesome canine braid because the braid is absolutely impossible to 
to damage pretty much. I've used it. I've abused it. Got a link down in the description. But anyways, to uh, my coupon code. But anyways, that's the line that I keep in my truck. Obviously, I have about 1,800 spools of this and about 200 spools of this, and I keep those all the time. But for the most part, that's how I use them. And I'm trying to keep it real simple for you guys. So I appreciate you watching the video. Go ahead down below or wherever it's at. Hit the subscribe button. Turn the alerts on. Getting everything ready for you, Fala. I will see y'all in the next video.